The panel set up to investigate the alleged use of underage voters in the recent uh, Kano state local election has submitted its report without any indictment on officials of uh, INEC. Indeed. But based on the outcome of the report, INEC chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu dismissed as spurious the allegations that the election management body manipulated the election in favor of any political party. When INEC maintained that the voters' register used for the Kano election is the same as that used in the 2015 general election. After examining some images in circulation, the committee found that they have been available, the pictures, long before the Kano local government elections. The few images and video clips from Kano show no accreditation of voters or any relationship with the INEC voter register. The register used in the Kano local government election of 10th February 2018 was the one compiled in 2011, updated in 2014, and used for the 2015 general elections. The commission did not add a single name to the voter register in Kano before the local government elections on the 10th of February, 2018. As with all elections, some political parties have won and some have lost using the same register. In fact, many constituencies have changed hands from one political party to another between elections on the basis of the same register. Therefore, for anyone to suggest that the same register on the basis of which political parties have won and lost elections at different times is sadly unreliable, is curious to say the least. Well, we have with us in the studio a public affairs analyst, Femi Lawson. Good morning to you and thank Good you for joining us. Good morning. Now, Good how morning. do you even if, uh, analyze this issue effectively when INEC has even refused to release uh, the report by the committee set up to look into it? I think to start with, uh, before even talking about making the report public as expected mm. particularly by the media, I think we must understand that it is a... Uh, not really proper, and I think it's ridiculous that INEC will subject itself to a probe by itself mm -hmm. on an issue that is neither an internal issue of the INEC administrative or discipline. This is an issue that has to do with the integrity of the commission, mm -hmm. and I would have expected that in probing this, INEC should have involved other stakeholders in the electoral yeah. process, you know, representative of the political parties, mm -hmm. the civil society, and the media you know, in unraveling the truth or otherwise behind these, uh, you know, accusations. Mm -hmm. But for INEC to have constituted a committee made up of its own commissioners to probe itself, what ordinarily are you expecting the ordinary Nigerians to, would INEC, INEC have come out to indict itself? So mm -hmm. in, it's, it's in practically the light, not possible. In the light mm -hmm. of this then, what, what, how does it render the uh, final outcome or the reports that INEC has come it, up, it, it, uh, come there up is, with? There's already an indictment on the credibility of that report. Mm -hmm. Listening to the chairman, I felt a little bit disappointed that he has done more trying to justify the hills of the past, you know. And, you know, if you look at the concerns that warranted these agitations that led to this probe in the first place. Mm. There were no concerns really about the Kano local government election. No. The truth is that we all know what local government elections are in Nigeria. Generally. They are nothing to yes. talk about. Mm. But it was, these are concerns raised about the future of elections in Nigeria, particularly 2019. 2019. Mm -hmm. So INEC should have looked beyond what happened in 2011, 2015 in a country where we are hoping that we advance in the course of our elections. You know, to, you should have look, INEC should have looked at the concerns being raised by people ahead of 2019, not because it has been used in the past. And I also could focused, have, focused its investigation on the claims of underage voting and not necessarily the outcome of that uh, that uh, February uh, election in, in uh, Yes, in in like, I, like I said, the, uh, the, the basis of that demand for that probe was not actually because people expected that maybe some other political parties would have won election mm. during the local government election in Kano. Yeah. Like I said, it is on the basis of 
looking at the future of elections, particularly if you look at what happened around 2015 and previous elections, where there have been accusations of mass voting, underage voting, mm -hmm. and now we are seeing images and videos. It is left for INEC to have, you know, ensure that there's transparency in the course of the probe by bringing stakeholders, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the course of unraveling the... Okay. Nobody is indicted. A political party may have been criticizing INEC, being in a bad position, yeah. but INEC should have looked beyond the criticism of the main opposition party to the credibility of the process as a one to its own integrity. Mm. That and it brings me that back to uh, you know mm. releasing that report which INEC has not done. Now the uh, of course the umpire, electoral umpire we're talking about, you know, conducting that election, saying that of course it wasn't part of it. It's only provided the voter register of Kanu uh, for Kanu Siek to conduct yeah. that election. And he found mm. out that INEC register of we're voters not we're, not, in we're not places, used in yeah. most polling areas, yes. thereby absolving uh, itself. itself. Yeah. Uh, so many have been calling for the release of that report. So how do you even know the loopholes? How do you know where to cover, what not to do? But, and is that even enough to assuage fears of Nigerians going well, into 2019? Well, I think the ch chairman of INEC has given a lot of clues about you know, the outcome of that investigation. But I think it is not enough, you know, as far as guiding the integrity of that commission is concerned. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are really concerned, if you look at the prevailing situations around the elections in Nigeria, Nigerians are really concerned about the integrity of our electoral process. And INEC should have taken advantage, you know, that that investigation offered, you know, to build public confidence by letting Nigerians know the truth and the awesome you know, content of its investigation. But like I say, I, like I said, it is not enough for INEC to have proved itself. INEC should have brought in stakeholders. But to be fair, to be fair to INEC, there was no formal complaint about the conduct of that election, no formal complaint about how the, the register was used. That. No, 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 you see, or not. Issues, no, we, we may not. He said INEC the, took it upon itself. No, these this mm -hmm. issues of integrity, especially when it comes to electoral integrity, are not issues that must necessarily be reduced to the point that somebody has to put up a petition, written petition like the chairman insinuated. Yeah. No, 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 no. You see, these are issues of public concern. These are issues that ordinarily, if reported in the media, must be taken up you know, with due seriousness. Mm -hmm. So we must, I don't align myself with the opinion that there were no formal complaint. This, uh, this was an issue that was in the media. It dominated editorials, you know, it dominated discourse across the, you know, the platforms on the social media. So it's enough ground to probe it. But what do you make of claims by the uh, INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakub, uh, that uh, the Kano underage voters were not on INEC register? Well, what are we supposed to make of that? Well, Should that really give us confidence? It, it gives more concern than confidence because the process, to me, has not been transparent because it was the process INEC of probing, probing itself. Probing it, so yeah. INEC may have said, well, there are no underage voters on this register, but you must also remember that while, while giving that report, that INEC has been undergoing processes of removing underage voters, dead persons, and mm -hmm. you know, all sort of other issues Aliens that has to do with well. the voters' register. So we cannot say there are no underage and voters. And of course, you said that uh, you know, the lists of voters have been given to political parties, the 68 political parties, and none of them you know, has come out to say that these are aliens. And yeah, well, I think that's one unfortunate thing and one major area for areas of, we saw a sense of uh, uh, honor, uh, all, one major area of irresponsibility of our political parties. Political parties in Nigeria has been reduced to an ordinary tool you know, of contesting elections. Mm. Political parties are not engaged in voters' education. They are not engaged you know, in basic things that you know, m give credibility to the electoral process. You can imagine a political party that can afford having polling agents across the entire polling stations in an election, but would not be able to hire consultants or even its members mm. to probe details of a voter's register mm. that has been offered. But I think it marks a lot of irresponsibility on behalf of our political parties. And I think this should be a wake-up call to our political parties to begin to see the need to have, to see, you know, political party as being beyond just ordinary tools of contesting elections. Mm.
uh, at least cleaning up the electoral process in itself. And, mm. you know, like some analysts have said, politicians, the judiciary, electoral uh, election officials, everyone, everyone seems to be involved, involved. in, uh, you sure, know, sure. Uh, this complicity. Uh, Fami Lawson, thank you very much for yes, joining us. Thank you for coming. On the show this morning.